Hey everyone, I'm Cryptic Fox, and welcome back to my winery. Uh, things did not end well with our first winery, so Cryptic Estates was the winery I had before in our first video. As you saw, we had a little bit of trouble with our crops initially. I let one of the crops last too long in the vine, and I lost that crop entirely. Uh, so I, I kind of got myself into a bad financial position where we just weren't selling enough wine to get ahead. Now we started off with some uh, $35,000, and I restarted a new winery so we could kind of... Uh, Kind of expand a little bit and see how the game plays as you get a little farther into the game. Now, uh, I've been making bottles of wine for a few seasons. We're at um, 2027 now. I can't remember what year it started at, but it's been a few seasons anyway. Uh, our renown is up to seven, and it seems like you gain a renown each time you manage to produce a five-star bottle of wine. And I've kind of got it down to a point now where with the Chardonnay, I, I kind of know what I'm looking for in that distribution. So I, I can kind of make a seven, uh, a, a five-star bottle of wine relatively easily as long as the weather can, um, cooperates and we can get a reasonable crop. So I have still had some some scenarios where the crops have, haven't turned out the way that I want because you can't really control whether it's going to be rainy or sunny. But our winery is going significantly better. So if we take a look in our financial reports, which should be here somewhere. There we go. Our latest financial board, oh yeah, age 10. So I guess we've been around for 10 years now. Uh, we still only have the original tile, so I'm going to want to expand a little bit. Lifetime five-star wines, we've had six of them, which is good. Financial reports, uh, wine distributor sales, 55,809. So, so 29,497 is what we made last season, which is way better than what I've been doing. And mostly it's just because I've, I've realized that the longer you can leave the grapes on the vine into the season the better the outcome will be in terms of the yield. So down here you've got your total yield and it'll show how much you're, how, like, how much in terms of tons you're gonna get of the grapes. So if you can get some of the, that falls in the four to six range in terms of your ripeness, and you get a nice large yield, you can make a lot of bottles. And then if you manage to make a five star wine with a lot of bottles, that's a, a nice good earning power. So we're up to $76,000, it's growing pretty nicely. And I think it's about time we added, added another field so that we can maybe trying to get to a place where we're growing multiple wines because I think I'm at the point now where we can only really advance so quickly because I've only ever got one crop growing at a time. Most of the tiles around me are loam. I kind of want to re-roll one of these loam ones and hope I can get sand. It would be nice to maybe plant a different crop over here. This forest, if I uh, grant a percentage bonus to all adjacent vines fertility, which is good. Um, What happened? Why did I just lose it? I thought I had a forest there. Oh, no, I don't have the forest yet. Okay, so I'd have to add the forest. It's only... Well, it's going to cost $15,000. It would be nice to add to the fertility of, uh, of the crops that are next to it. But this one here we start with, and we can't even click on it. So I guess it's just like a decorative tile. We can't really do anything there. But let's um, let's maybe worry first about adding another, another crop, and then we'll worry about whether we can get a, a bonus on it. So I'm going to try and go to this side. I would like to re-roll, though, and see if we can get something better. There's clay this time. 75,000. That is definitely too much. Forest. We don't want that. Sandy. That's kind of what I want. $50,000. I probably should have paid attention to that. Ah, 50,000. All right. So, I mean, I could re-roll this, but it's going to cost $150,000. Okay, I just wasted a ton of money. <laughs> Let's go over here and get a loam tile. 20,000. So, that, man, we really carved into our profit here. That was a bad idea. Let's add the tile. Oh, look, it actually expands out a little bit farther, too. Um, and we've been growing... We've been growing white wine. So we've been growing the Chardonnay. Um, but I think it would be nice maybe to add in a red wine. Let's let's bring in the, the Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, planting price is 5000 Money maintenance cost is only eighty, So it's actually it's cheaper to grow and maintain and plant and everything than... Oh, look at that. It actually puts like the multiple ripenesses in your column. That's good. That's really good, actually. Uh, so I guess when you have multiple fields of the same grape, it'll just have an individual column for it, and that's showing like the average ripeness across all of your little little uh, field tiles. So we've gotten pretty good with the Chardonnay, and I know basically how I want to grow those, but there's definitely an opportunity in terms of figuring out um, figuring out what we need to do to to do well with the other uh, like with the other the other grape varietals. So. We have 260 bottles of uh, Chardonnay in the cellar. Well, actually, of uh, just this one particular one particular type here. Now, when when competitions come up, we have a chance to enter this in, in a competition. Uh, this these bottles are relatively old, so the acidity is coming down and the sweetness is kind of going up. Um, so we're gonna want to sell this sooner rather than later, ultimately, because it's gonna get past its prime. So I guess maybe I'll sell most of these bottles. We'll do 100 and 
50 there, 55, and 55. Now, I've gotten the uh, the reputation for all three of the, the sellers up to a 5, which is good. So this one, as long as your distributor relations are at 5, all workers' actions except clear forest and plant forest are free. Which is neat. Um, we don't really get access to many of the worker actions until we can actually expand a little bit and add like a worker, like a worker house kind of a thing. Uh, Hugang Wine Market. So this one, as long as your distributor relations are 5, I can sell 100% of my bottles through Hugang. Uh, however, I don't really want to do that because Manhattan Cellars gives me 10% more for the wine that I sell through them. So I'm kind of focusing on keeping them at the high point. That way we can kind of make a little bit more money as we sell off our wine. So we'll sell what we have in the cellar. And in the meantime, let's keep an eye on our crops and hopefully they'll grow well uh, through this season. We've had mostly clear skies so far this season. A little bit of rain. Uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon finally sprouted some, some foliage. Which is good because the ripeness was getting really high. If it gets up to like this nine or ten point, then your your vines are overexposed or your grapes are overexposed, and then it becomes a problem. Uh, we're getting this down to like a seven, so it's gonna have a decent amount of tannins in it. I, I want my Chardonnay to come up a little bit if we can. Total yield about two point four two tons of grapes between the two varietals, which is kind of cool. Uh, this I could do with maybe coming down to a six. I'd like this one to come up to maybe a five or a six, but we only have until November to harvest because if it goes in December, we lose the crops, and we don't want that. Okay, so this one's a six. And it looks like, and this one's a five. Okay, so let's let's harvest now. And I guess it harvests everything at the same time. You can't tell it to harvest one field and not another. So that's good to know. When we get a full-on crop going in here, we've got lots of lots of fields of things going on. I have to be well aware of that. So 1.76 tons of the uh, the Chardonnay we we harvested, and the, the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon we got 1.1 tons of that, and they have the exact same characteristics. That's kind of interesting. Actually, it, it strikes me a little bit weird, but whatever. <laughs> so let's harvest this out, or uh, well, we've already harvested it rather. But let's take this out and we'll uh, we'll crush it up a little bit. So we only have one, we still only have the one crushing me method until we can expand on the estate and get a little bit larger. So we'll use the uh, the pigeage crush grapes. One or more of your varietals doesn't have a crushing method started. Oh, you got to actually select all of your methods at the same time. I hope they don't mix them together. Actually, I didn't even notice if it has the same effect on the tannins for the red grapes as it does for the white. That'll be interesting to see. Okay, so we have to do fermentation. And again, it looks like we end up having to ferment everything for the same period of time. I'm not I'm not really thrilled with that. Um, and again, exactly the same characteristics between the two, which strikes me as strange, but... Every two weeks of fermentation decreases sweetness by one. So, I i mean, I would like the Chardonnay to be more sweet than the, the Cabernet Sauvignon, but... Oh, no, it does it does have a separate indicator for these. Okay, good. So, Chardonnay, we're going to do... Um, we'll get that down to a sweetness of five. And the Cabernet Sauvignon, let's do uh, four weeks or one month for that. We'll get it down to a sweetness of four. Uh, I, have to, I have yet to figure out with the Cabernet Sauvignon, what uh, what characteristics we're looking for. But I know that we'll probably have a little bit higher on the tannins for, for a red wine than we would have for a white, uh, and maybe a little lower on the acidity. Okay, fermentation's complete. Now we're getting into the pressing process. Okay, for our, for our Chardonnay, we really want the acidity to land somewhere around a seven when we're all finished. My tannins are at a seven now, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this in the cellar for a month to bring the tannins down to a five. So, which means we're gonna want the acidity to drop uh, by only one point, because it's going to be in there for one month. So I want to get this from a 5 to an 8, so we use 30% pressed juice for that. Um, and then when we store it in the barrel, it will come down to a 7, which should be good, and the tans will come down to a 5. I think this will be an ideal bottle of wine. Cabernet Sauvignon, this is one that, I again, I haven't really figured out how this is going to work. So it looks like the, the acidity effect is the same for both. Um, but I want the tannins to be a little bit higher this uh, for this particular, like for red wine, um, because we can kind of keep it in the in the barrel longer. Now the trouble is, it's only it's only at a tannin of seven, so I kind of would have preferred to have a higher ripeness level. Nevertheless, um, again, I have no idea what I want to do with the acidity, so I, I think um, we'll try to go like completely middle of the road, and we'll see what happens. They did add in something where when you produce a bottle of wine, it'll give you a tip about whether you had too low acidity or too low tannins or whatever. So if I set this so to go up to like a seven acidity, uh, and we have it in the barrel for like one month, which seems really weird for a red wine. You normally would want it to be in there longer. Um, then I think that should uh, that should kind of get that down to right, back down to a five, I guess. Let's press it out. Now we get to the barreling process. So 
we have different levels on each of our wines now at this point. So for this one, um, we only have still only have the one type of barrel. I'd like to get ultimately get to this white oak barrel, which is kind of cool. But um, we use the common French oak again. Uh, it'll decrease acidity by one and tannins by two for every month. So we're going to have this in uh, for one month. Okay, so it has the exact same effect on the red wine in terms of reducing the tannins by the same amount. So again, I don't know. I guess we can go down to a tannin of four, but that's going to be a little weird for a red wine, red wine to have tannins that low. And I don't think it's going to give us a very good rated or very well rated bottle. Nevertheless, um, our acidity is seven here. So I guess if we leave it in one month, then it will come down to a six for acidity and a five for tannins. Sweetness at a four. All right, this right, we'll go this route. So we're going to leave both of them in for one month and we'll see what happens. Time flies in this game. We're ready to, to bottle already. So our red wine is at acidity six, tannins of five, um, sweetness of four, and then our white wine is acidity seven, sweetness five, tannins five. So this one should make, should produce a really a really well rated bottle, I think. Uh, if you can leave it in the keg longer or the um, in the barrel longer, rather, uh, you can actually get some nice some neat traits like buttery and stuff on it, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're gonna get. 10 barrels of this that we can bottle up, which is nice. Um, we're going to use a screw cap on this, I suppose. We'll bottle it up. Uh, leaving us with the red wine. Again, we'll bottle this one as well. It's, it's a very young wine, though. I'm going to use a screw cap for now, but ultimately I think we're going to want to switch to a cork for the red wine. But since I don't know what traits I'm looking for, I don't really want to spend extra money on it just yet. Uh, so let's pick... I don't know. Uh... All right, this looks like a reasonable bottle, so we'll put our, put our Cabernet Sauvignon on this bottle. Um, uh, we're gonna get six, six barrels of this. Now we need to assign taste testing again, of course. Uh, I should probably sell what I have in here. What do I have? What do I have left in this? 260. I thought I had... I thought I had already told it to sell that. Now, oh, you know what? I'm gonna hold on to these bottles. This was a five-star bottle of wine from 2024, and it's still looking in good shape. It's four years old. If there's a wine competition that comes up, I would like to enter it, but you have to have some bottles in storage in order to enter the, the competition. Um, this Chardonnay is the one we just made, so we're going to organize a tasting for the Chardonnay. And because I've been doing well and building some renown, we've actually got some, um, we have some, uh, some wine tasters that have prestige also. So I'm going to try using all three of the, the reviewers that have prestige of three. I, I have a feeling they're going to be a little harder grading, so hopefully this still goes well. Yes! Five-star bottle of wine. Starting price $34.90, which is great. Cabernet Sauvignon is a wine that leaves a strong first impression. And this wine is a testament to that. I didn't even realize it was the Cabernet Sauvignon I was testing. That is amazing. I, I got a five-star bottle on the first bottle of red wine I produced. No. No, okay, that must be a bug. Because that was not the Cabernet Sauvignon. That was the Chardonnay. All right, whatever. Organize the tasting. Um, I don't want to have the three-star people rate this one. Because I don't know what I'm doing yet. So I'm going to maybe go and we'll go with some, some people that have a lower prestige. I don't know if this has much of an effect. Oh, you can actually... I thought there was only three people get it rated at a time, but I guess you can have a whole bunch. So we'll choose the lowest prestige people for this, just so that maybe rate me a little more friendly. Invite to tasting. A five-star bottle for this in as well. Good Cabernet Sauvignon is everywhere, but great ones are rare, just like this little gem. All right, so I did something right. I, didn't, I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing, but I guess it kind of lands in that same place as you get with the white wines. So we just produced two five-star bottles. That's going to be amazing. This is going to be really good sales. So... Uh, we'll sell, we'll sell most of this one, I guess. So, 700 bottles of that left. Wow, let's go with, um, trying to sell 600 here, 200, and then 200. And we'll keep 100 bottles in the cellar. Oh, I guess, well, it's, uh, 200 bottles in the cellar. So, that's fine. Uh, as it ages a little bit, the price will actually go up. So, we're getting almost $48 for this bottle, which is amazing. So, we'll sell that off, uh, and then we can go into our Cabernet Sauvignon. We'll sell this. Only 720 bottles of this one, so I'm going to put, um, I don't know. Oh, no, wait. No, really? I can only sell one type of wine at a time? I feel like that's got to be a bug. I thought it said before that you could sell the two different types of wines. Well, whatever. I mean, I have a feeling this Cabernet Sauvignon will benefit by aging anyway, even though it's not in the barrel. So we'll let that go. We'll work on our next uh, our next season's crops. We're all we done at ten thousand dollars. This was an expensive season. I spent way too much money looking for a cro a plot that we could get to to grow some new grapes. I should just grab the loan one that was over here in the first place. I'd still like to unlock this forest. There's fifteen thousand dollars to do that, and it, I don't know, it seems like kind of a waste. 
With all these five-star bottles you've been producing, I should have some options here in the uh, the chance and circumstance. So let's try that out and see what happens. These have not always been very favorable for me. Some of the chance cards I've picked have been really expensive. Uh, but let's try a chance and see what happens. An unexpected and drought is sweeping across your vineyards. They added voiceover too, which is cool. It wasn't Land in there when I first perched. played. All right, four consecutive instances of sunny skies. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be a fifth one after that, but that should significantly raise up the uh, the ripeness of both of our uh, our grape crops. So we'll have to be a little careful. They're going to get to the high end really fast. And then we're going to be looking for some rain to bring it down. Uh, and actually, I haven't tried these circumstance cards yet. And since we've had so many five-star bottles, I should have a few of these sort of saved up that I can use. Let's see what happens with the circumstance. The, the mayor's coming. The mayor has heard about your vineyard and would like to pay a visit. It's a good opportunity to impress him with some of your finest wines. Once you have crafted the perfect wine, invite the mayor over for an afternoon in your estate's grounds for a glass or two. Do well, and you might just get that government grant you've always wanted. <laughs> a government grant to grow wine, that wouldn't be so bad. All right, I'm going to invite the mayor because I actually have some nice wine in the cellar already. Uh, which one do we want to pick? Let's go with the five-star 2024 Chardonnay. We'll see how this goes over. Did the did the mayor arrive? I mean, I don't even know what's happening. All right. We'll let that run. I'm going to get the clippers handy because we're going to need to... Well, actually, we're going to need some growth on these because things are going to get ripe really fast. We're at ripeness of four. The, sun, the clear skies are going to last for a while. This might get up to a ripeness of seven or eight. Oh, look, I can actually see the different colored grapes on there. That's cool. Got so, so the mayor green, arrived but... at your chateau giddy with excitement. You give him a tour of the grounds, and with the afternoon sun preparing to sink below the horizon, you uncork a bottle of your wine. You pour him a glass, watch him savor the aromas. He takes a sip at first, then a gulp. He closes his eyes, as if suddenly hearing the voices of angels. In his mind, he is taken back to a time when things were more simple, and all one had to do to get by was smile. He opens his eyes and simply says, Good. It's good. Looks like you did well. <laughs> so we, we just made $35,000 by having the mayor come over and drink some wine. Sweet. That was a really good circumstance. So it seems like the circumstance scenarios are maybe going to be all things that will produce a positive outcome, where... Chance, you kind of take a chance. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I've had some of those chance ones where I got invited to a, uh, invited to a surprise party and it cost me like $15,000. It was kind of crazy. Okay, our ripeness is at 7 for both of our fields. We're still getting those clear skies. I really want that to go down now. Oh, our renown is up to 10. I should actually look and see how much it's going to cost us to, in terms of renown, to... Oh, finally some rain. Thank you. Um... In order to upgrade, we do need Renown, so we can upgrade our Chateau from this little shack we have to maybe something that actually looks like a Chateau. Oh, the grapes are overexposed, so they're not producing anymore. So I'm not going to get more yield. I'm just sort of hoping it would come down, but it's not going to. It's already November. We're getting cloudy weather. I'm going to harvest these. We'll see what happens. Man, we're up to 70,000. Oh, yeah. They're they're both... Look, this is going to be tough. All right, so we're going to have to do a little bit of funny work with our, with our process here to try to get things bottled up the way we really want. Um, now this normally would, uh, the crushing method would normally increase our tannins, but it's not going to this time. Alright, on to fermentation. Um, we're going to have to have this wine in the barrel for a few months. The tannins are at 10, so ultimately I want to get those down to maybe like a 4. At least on the Chardonnay. Uh, and so we're going to need acidity that's relatively high here, so we're going to have to bring our sweetness down quite a bit as well. So I'm going to set this for... Um, well, the full two months, so we'll bring the sweetness down as much as we can. Uh, same thing with this one. I don't want this to be too sweet. There's our first shot at a competition here now, again. So, uh, we have a Cabernet Sauvignon we can put forward. We'll take the one that we produced last year. It was a five-star, but it's, it's not very old, so I don't know that it's necessarily going to do very well. But we'll choose that, and we'll go with the 2024 five-star Chardonnay. And then for our best in craft, I'm going to pick the Chardonnay as well. And we'll see how that goes over. Fermentation's complete. It's time to press. Uh, now, we're going to need to raise our acidity quite a bit, so our blend on the Chardonnay is going to have to be really high, unfortunately, um, because we're going to want to try to bring this down. I, I actually won't be able to get this down to the point that I want. So, if I 100% press juice, that, that can't be good. I mean, it just it can't be. 
Normally, the free run juice is the fa- is the more favorable of the two, uh, but we're gonna have to go with pressed juice, I guess. So this will allow us to have the the wine in the barrel, say for three months, and then it'll bring our acidity from a ten down to uh, down to about a seven. So we might so we might still do okay with this with this particular yield, but I don't know. Uh, again, for this one, I'm going to bring the tannins down. Maybe we'll put this one in for two months. Uh, so I'm going to want to get the acidity up in this one up to... What did I... I wasn't paying attention to what my acidity level got to be on the last batch. But if we have an acidity around... Maybe around a six? I think that will do okay. I don't know. The Cabernet Sauvignon is still a bit of a mystery for me. But we'll, let's give it a pressing. Okay, acidity 10 on this wonderful bottle. So we're going to choose a barrel. It'll be the common French oak, of course. And we're gonna do the same thing with the barrel for our red wine. Now this like this one I got the acidity only up to a nine. So if we leave this in place for two months, that'll give me an acidity of seven. That's not what I wanted to be. It was not uh, clearly I didn't I didn't pay enough attention to my mix there. Um, okay, so if we leave it in for uh, we leave it in for three months, that will get this acidity down to a six. And the Chardonnay, we're gonna leave that in for as long as possible. If we leave that for three months, it'll get down to a seven as well. So it's three months for both of these, and we'll see what see what we manage to produce. We've gotten some sort of a status effect on our on our field here. My vine died. Um. Well, that's not ideal. Let's plant some more Chardonnay, I guess. That really stinks. I guess they only have a certain lifespan, and then they die off. Maybe that's that's kind of a shame. Uh, we're in the month of March now. How's our how are, how are our wines developing here? So. We've still got the Chardonnay as a acidity of 9. It's still got to go 2 months. Man, I thought it had been longer than that. And then we have the Cabernet Sauvignon, which is an acidity of 8. Uh, tannins are 8 also. And contrary to popular belief, it doesn't taste like dirt. Earthy flavor grants 10% to your wine's price. Nice! We've got a nice barrel benefit for the Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon. Hopefully we can get a buttery benefit for the Chardonnay, because that helps raise the price also. It's now May. I think we should be ready to bottle. Now, our Cabernet Sauvignon has been getting nothing but sunny skies. So its ripeness is all the way up to a 9. Uh, the Chardonnay is a little bit behind because the plant died, so we had to replant it. It's at a 6 now. I'd, I'd be actually be okay with harvesting this at a 6. That would be pretty good, but the 9's too high. It's already it's already been overexposed, so it's not producing. It's not gonna Our yield is no longer going to grow for this particular uh, this particular grape varietal, which isn't great. But let's get the wines bottled up that we produced last season. So we have an Acidity 7, Sweetness 6, and Tans of 4 in our Chardonnay. Uh, hopefully this one will turn out well, but it, normally I think the tannins are better when they're around about a five. The acidity is right at the right level, though, which is kind of important. Uh, let's use uh, screw cap again for the white wine. Um, actually, I wonder if I can sell the bottles for more if they have a cork. They cost more to produce, so I'm curious whether you can sell them for more. I don't know. Let's try a cork this time around. So that's, uh, yeah, we'll just leave the name the same too. Cryptic Cove Chardonnay 2028. Cost per bottle, $5. We're going to bottle up uh, 11 barrels of this stuff. Wow, this could be a lot. Uh, and then in our Cabernet Sauvignon, we have an acidity of 6, sweetness of 6, tannins of 4, which is maybe a bit on the low side. We're going to bottle this up. Uh, we'll give it that same bottle I used last time because that did pretty well. I'll leave the name the same for now also. And we're going to use a cork on this one. On to the tasting. So we can see if we did well with this or not. Um... Man, I still have 700 bottles of that Cabernet Sauvignon left because I didn't sell it last time. I should probably let's set that into sell now. Let's send maybe 250 bottles here. We'll send 150 each of these. We'll keep 150 in the cellar. See how it ages. I'm, I'm really curious to see how that goes. We're getting significantly more for the bottles of Chardonnay than we are for this Cabernet Sauvignon. Even though it's a, a five-star bottle. Okay, let's organize the tasting. Uh, see how this goes over for the... Cabernet Sauvignon first. We're going to bring in the uh, the hoity-toity people. I'm going to start with... Um, I believe it was two of the fours and one of the threes. I, I don't know that this is going to be an optimal bottle, but it, it seemed okay. Yes! Five stars again. Wine price, $40.50. That's a pretty good starting price. It still says Cabernet Sauvignon, so there's some sort of a weird bug there, but that's okay. Uh, we stored, scored another five-star bottle. We're just, we're just rocking it in this wine right now. Uh, let's try an organized tasting for our... Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, we got a five-star last time, so I'm going to try and maybe get people to have a little bit better prestige, because that'll price our bottle better. Try three-star prestige. I don't know. Really iffy on how this is going to turn out. Ooh! Oh! That was... Oh! Oh, not so good. 
Tans were too low. I knew they were going to be too low, but this Cabernet, uh, this Cabernet certainly reflects a lot of the good things about the varietal. Big and bold, thanks to the tannins and acidity. And yet, the tans were too low, so I, I knew that was going to be a problem. But the grapes got overexposed, so there was really, I mean, there was really so much that I could do. Uh, our grapes are super overexposed now. I'm not even going to need to trim these. This is going to be a horrible yield this time around. 0.88 tons total between two fields. That's really not good. We need to get some rain. Without rain, this 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 particular year is going to be shot. Oh, look at that. We actually won. How about that? So presenting the Sivo Wine Awards 2029, Best Cabernet Sauvignon goes to Cryptic Cove Cabernet Sauvignon 2027. Good job, Cryptic Cove. Congratulations. Plus 10% to your wine price and receive three renown. That's sweet. Did we win on anything else? Um, well, that's so funny. We won on our Cabernet Sauvignon. So odd. Uh, we did not win the Chardonnay. That went to the Fens, unfortunately. Done. So that's sweet. Uh, we, we scored really well there. That was amazing. So that add us, added some more renown. What's it actually going to take to upgrade our Chateau? I'd really like to do that. Oh, no. 50 renown. To be, to go from a shack to a house, we need 50 renown. That That is... Wow. That'll increase our total barrel storage to 220 and total bottle storage. Monthly maintenance cost of 500. I'd really like to upgrade this house. I need to sell a serious amount more wine and produce some like seriously high quality stuff to get our renown up because we're only at 16. This is going to take a while. Okay, acidity 7 on our Cabernet Sauvignon. Wow, that's funny. It started with a really high acidity this time. Uh, sweetness of 8 and tannins of 7. So that's not bad. Our Chardonnay, similar. Grapes are all crushed. Let's get into the fermentation. So this Cabernet Sauvignon... I want to bring the tannins down. Um, if I, if we have this in the barrel for two months, that'll get us to a tannin of about a five. I'd really rather have something more like a six, but a five, I guess, is better than nothing. And that'll bring our acidity down. So I don't think I want to raise the acidity at all, but we do want to bring the sweetness down because we're at an eight, and that's on the high side. So if I bring the sweetness down to maybe, maybe a five. So two weeks, four weeks, six weeks will bring us down to a five sweetness. Uh, and then in our Chardonnay. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. We'll go six weeks. We'll bring the sweetness down to about a five. Actually, you know what? The Cabernet Sauvignon, let's bring the sweetness down to a four. A little less sweet on the red wine, I think. All right, on to the pressing. Cabernet Sauvignon, let's bring the acidity. So this will increase the acidity, and we don't want to do that. So the tannins, if we, if we store this for, say, two months, that'll bring our tannins down to a five, and our acidity will come down to a five also. So I'm okay with this just the way that it is. We're going to use it, um, actually, if we use 100% free run juice, then we won't increase the acidity at all, and that will just let it come down. The Chardonnay, however, we want to keep the acidity high. So we're going to bring this, we're going to have this in the barrel for two months to bring our tannins down to a five. So I'm gonna to wanna to actually increase this to, to a 20% blend on the pressed juice to get us up to a nine, and then when it's in the barrel, it'll come back down to a seven. Off to the barrels. So again, only the same, only the one type of barrel we have, the common French oak. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, we want to be in the barrel for two months. And similarly for the Chardonnay, two months for that one as well. Uh, that'll take us from uh, February into um, April. So when it's in April, we'll be in a position to, to, uh, to bottle these up. Let's tackle that. And I think I'm going to grab... Oh, no, I don't have enough yet. I guess you have to... As you get more five-star ratings, you have to build this bar up by getting multiple... Multiple five-star bottles in order to get ahead. So we're going to grab some more of the bottles that we have in our storage and try to sell these off. Because we're getting actually quite a bit built up in here. We already got the five... We already got... Uh, we already got the prize on this bottle. So let's maybe sell these off. Yeah, it's only like $27. So even with that benefit, it's not really high. Uh, but in here, let's throw 100 bottles this way, and we'll do 25 in each of these. These should sell relatively quickly, and then we can get some more out to market from one of our other vintages. It's been a rainy season so far, but it's April. We have a little bit more growth happening. Uh, not a ton, though. I mean, it's going to be a little tough. Our, our ripeness is still really low, but let's uh, let's go in and barrel up the, the wine we produced last season. Uh, acidity 5 for this Cabernet Sauvignon. So this one looks like it's fairly level. I mean, again, uh, the tannins of maybe a 6 might be ideal for this. I, th I have a feeling with the red wines, it kind of reverses what you would see with the white. And the tannins are more favorable than the acidity, but we'll find out, I guess. Uh, we'll bottle this up. I'm going to choose the same type of bottle I used last time. We're only going to get three barrels of it this time because we had a bit of a rough growing season. Uh, and then we have the Chardonnay. Again, this one should turn out to be a really nice bottle. With five sweetness, five tannins, and seven acidity, this one should be really, really nice. Uh, we're going to go with the cork on these as well. Bottle that up. 
Okay, now we need to arrange tastings again. We're getting quite a seller in here. Uh, organize the tasting for this one first. Now, we didn't do so well last time, so we're going to maybe go with the two stars, and we'll see how this works out. Invite to tasting. Five-star bottle. Yes! Okay, so I, I think I'm kind of nailed in where I want to land for our Cabernet Sauvignon, which is good. It's amazing. Okay, 26.20, that's going to start at for bottle price. And then for uh, the Chardonnay, again, I think we're going to do really well on this bottle. So I'm going to bring in... I'm going to bring in some four, some people with four-star prestige, and hopefully they look favorably on this wine. Yes, another five-star bottle. We've got this dialed in. 44.40 as the starting price for that one. We've actually boosted this up so we can use another... Uh, um, another Chancer, or uh, whatever it's called. <laughs> Chance or coincidence or whatever it is. Uh, okay, so we've got, uh, we actually have some availability in the market, so we can take some of our wine and sell that, which is good. We have 600 bottles there, 360 there, 1,200 of this one, 1,320. Man, we've got a lot in storage right now. I think I'm going to leave, um, I don't know, we're going to leave this one for now, this three-star bottle. And let's sell some more of these fives and try to get our cash up a little bit. We're going to sell a big chunk of this stuff. So if we go uh, 800 bottles here... And then 200 here and 200 here. That'll leave us with 120 bottles in the cellar, but we got a really decent chunk of money. 56.80 for this bottle. Amazing. So our, our winery is going significantly better now. We're, we're getting good cash. We're producing five-star bottles of wine. Our renown is climbing. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe next time when we come back, we can, uh, we can expand on the estate and make it a little bit nicer. But I'm going to call it a wrap for today. And uh, carry on with this winery again next time. Cryptic Cove is doing way better than Cryptic Estates was, which, I mean, shouldn't really be that much of a surprise. The last one was kind of a train wreck. Uh, but nevertheless, thanks everyone for watching the video. I do hope you enjoy these and you'll come back and check out some more. I'm, as always, Cryptic Fox. I'll see all of you next time.